Hello again, I am Blunty and I've got a very unique camera review for you today. This is a camera I built out of cardboard and tape. Uh, well, to be fair, there's also a couple of little plastic parts in there, but yeah, seriously, it's a cardboard camera, and it's not just some cute paper craft thingy to stick on your shelf. It's actually a fully working, perfectly operational camera. It's called the Sharon STD35E, Sharon being the brand, STD standing for standard, because there's also a wide-angle variant, and the E marks this as the second design refinement, because the original version, well, it was a bit more fiddly to build and needed glue and cutting and things. But as you're seeing here, this camera simply folds together from flat packed cardboard panels, some of which just need a little bit of tape to hold them in place. It's the work of an hour or so to put together, and there's nothing particularly difficult about it. Some bits were slightly fiddly, I'll admit, and the instructions could be laid out better to make the order of the steps clearer, but with moderate care, it's simple enough. As simple as it looks, it's actually pretty clever in how it's been designed using an interlocking kind of triple walled construction to make sure it is light tight when completed and assembled to make sure your film isn't ruined before you can take your shots, of course, even with the film winders and sliding shutter mechanism and moving parts and all that. The only plastic parts required are the film spool holder and winder, because if you made those out of cardboard, of course, they'd be a bit weak to get the job done, and a film pressure plate at the back to help keep the film laying nice and flat for a exposing the image onto. The whole thing took me 45 minutes from opening the box to loading a reel of film ready to shoot. It's designed to be used with standard 35mm film, which of course in this digital camera world is rarer than it once was, but it is still being made fresh and it is still pretty easy to get your hands on, as are the materials and chemicals for development if, like me, you'd like to do it yourself at home. And I know that can sound intimidating, fiddling with the chemicals and such, but home processing black and white film is actually pretty straightforward. Some of you may have noticed the lack of a lens on this camera, and that's because the Sharon STD35E is a pinhole camera, pretty much the simplest and oldest form of camera ever. If you're not sure what a pinhole camera is, go ahead and Google it, some nifty science awaits you. It has a field of view around that of a 20mm lens on a regular full-frame camera, and an aperture value of around f130. This, of course, means your exposure times will be measured in seconds or even minutes, so a tripod is pretty much essential if you want to get any kind of sensible image out of the thing. Fortunately, there is a plastic plate with a quarter 20 tripod mount included, so you can stick it onto the bottom of your cardboard construction, and it makes life a whole lot easier. There's even some approximate exposure times for 100 ISO film printed on the back to give you some place to start. Loading the film goes pretty much like any other 35mm camera out there, actually. It's really simple and easy to do, and of course you've got the ability to rewind the exposed film back into the can so you can load and unload this camera without a dark room or a dark bag like you will need for many other types of DIY pinhole camera. For newbies, and for those who've never used a camera that didn't need batteries to work, this can be a fantastic way to start learning about the roots and history of photography. And trust me on this, it is a fascinating story. For those of us who've used film before, or perhaps even still do, this is still a fun project to build and play with. It's always refreshing and gratifying to spend a weekend messing around with something like this. So if you'd like to kick it old school, have some fun, maybe do a weekend project with the kids or whatnot, pick one up. You can find them at places like photojojo.com or Amazon probably. Or if you're in Sydney like me, you can do what I did and snatch it off the shelves at my favourite bookstore, Kino Kunia. And if you don't know the word I just said and you live in Sydney, shame on you. But it's a fantastic bookstore, one of my favourite places in this friggin' city. <laughs> but anyway, there you have it, a paper camera. And that's what I did with my weekend. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.